First of all, uh, it's a big thank you to the, to the invitation to uh, speak a few words. It's a very, very interesting and important occasion. And I suppose we should really seriously acknowledge a very pioneering effort from our private sector, in a sense, uh, with, uh, who has broken new grounds and uh, with, uh, with a national purpose. I'll continue, I will come to that theme again. But um, let's look at the topic of innovation, the national economy, and the role of the private sector, the way forward, basically. And of course, uh, it's nice to see people here with who are inventors, who are probably even dreaming their next one right now, as we think. I mean, that's what we need also. Uh, and then, how do you contribute to this? It's not a matter of winning an award. To Sri Lanka, it really matters today. It's translating some of these dreams, some of these ideas into real practice. We really want the problems to be solved. We really need to see the country going up, moving up. And uh, that's, we believe, the innovation is the way forward. Innovation has to be the way forward. And almost all the examples we have, without innovation, we have not seen countries going up. So, uh, going back to our poet philosopher, Sanzamuni Das Gumaratunga, he said sometime back, even before our freedom, 1948, it's talking about nations that does not create new things will not rise. Now how true. And he was pushing Sri Lankans to think, even during the time of being occupied, to press, to think, and we need to do this. And today this is much, much more relevant than yesterday. Because we see our trade deficit, we see the exports dwindling, we see the value, we see that what we are trading, or what we more or less traded time and time back, it's, we cannot see new things coming in. So there is this need to address these issues for the sake of the economy, for the sake of all of us, and for the future. So it's very, very important to think when, what we, when we dream, when we think, how do we connect to our nation, how do we connect to our economy, how do we connect to our people, and then how do we uplift them. And that should be in centermost in your mind. So this is very, very relevant today and hopefully we will be thinking along those lines. And if you go into the marketing gurus of Theodore Levitt, the professor Theodore Levitt, he's identified energy as central. And he said, like energy is key to most everything. Innovation is key to our, the, the vital spark that creates change, that creates improvement, and that brings progress. And this is from the professor of marketing. And we talked about these myopic views and the theories that been thinking too narrowly on one specific, you may miss a lot of opportunities. And there are a lot of examples of such in the world economy and for countries. So innovation, you need to keep it iterated, right, right, I mean emphasizing the importance. But then it's a word then we had to look at some examples, right? You can go on talking about it, but innovation is at the end of a pipeline. It's not the beginning. The beginning lies with you all, like the inventors. So innovation starts with inventions, comes with ideas. It's not, all, it's not only about science and technology. And when you look at classifying countries, we have a concept called Oslo Manual, and they have defined and it's opened up, it was mentioned how, at one point in time, the chairman Dilma, the Meryl J. Fernando, who went against perhaps the government and the peers and demonstrated how a grower can rise up the value chain, take control of the supply chain, and also bring in values. So the business models, you, are in, you can innovate on the business model. So now all business models are innovations. Processes, products, and even novel consume experience. How do you even perhaps organize the chairs? But there are a lot of science and technology, sure, and we need to appreciate, but every one of us can be in this process. If we think, if we think to about positively contribute, if we have a problem to solution, and then push for that solution, there is innovation embedded. So we have to come out as Sri Lankans in this. 
because we get caught to traffic, we get caught to perhaps the weather turning bad, the delay should not be a result. How can we innovate in that process itself? So we have these four areas on the product, the process, the consumer experience, and then the business models. So don't limit yourself to think that you have to have this brand new process, the brand new product, the new science. I don't know the quantum physics, so I cannot innovate. No way. There's so much you can do. So much we can build on the, the knowledge. But of course, as I mentioned, the invention, the ideas, leads to an innovation at the commerce end. As Dylan mentioned, the economy drives, the economics drive these changes. So you need to have these ideas. You may need to do research. Now, research doesn't necessarily mean that you need to go into the laboratory and do it. You can work in a simple bicycle shop. You can work to a sh some corner, remote corner, and bring some newspapers, get some ideas, and still research. But you need to, you need to have that attitude of searching to how to implement my idea, how to implement my idea. If it is something that has happened, if I see a change, you need to have that attitude to change, adopt that change, and then pursue that solution to that problem. So we need this value chain. We need these steps. You need to have the ideas. A nation with nationals without ideas, we have a big problem for that nation. So you need to have your brain, you need to have your gray matter, all the time thinking very positively and creatively. How do we solve our issues? How do we creatively contribute to the development? That's a must. That's a must. So sales and user, because then you have your consumers, because they keep coming back, they keep coming back to your idea, because they see a value in what you have offered. In marketing, maybe the value proposition, right? But you know, with one single value proposition, we cannot continue to, the, to stay in the market forever. You need to keep on innovating that one. So again, you need to come up with ideas to change and improve on. So there are three key parties, the three key areas, the dreamers. The dreamers come up with ideas. And then you have the doers. Sometimes the inventors, the people who come up with ideas need to have the support. You need to give a, they need to be given a platform, and this is one such instance. Without this, there are problems to the rest to move on. So it's a very, very important link. And then you need the enablers also, and that goes to the government. That goes to the, the people who actually take decisions on behalf of us, and perhaps set the stage, knowingly or unknowingly sometimes, directly affect us. And you may feel constrained because you may say the state is taking a decision which is totally against in our ability to act. So the enablers, the state, is very, very important. The doers and enablers really have to work in hand and they really depend on the dreamers. And sometimes a dreamer can be a doer. Now, Abraham Lincoln, to take from U.S., has carried a patent. He has the patent. An American medal for innovation, inventions, they carry the Edison and Lincoln together, the two faces on that medal, right? So you can, I mean, if you have the enablers and the doers and the dreamers combined, it's a reality at times, but it's quite nice. But we may have all of us doing something very effectively. And that's important. So if I see this image is clear, if I see a bicycle, and if I see some two individuals, what brings to your mind? Not degrees, not convocations in Ivy League universities. They didn't have that kind of the academic background. So Wilbur Wright and Owen Wright. Two brothers with a mission. Maybe like. We may have two brothers with a mission. Following the footstep of our father. Right? And they change. They change against lots of odds. Right? And all of us enjoy that change. We are flying. Right? And, uh, and who said this cannot be done? President of the Royal Society in UK, Lord Kelvin. 
And here are two bicycle winkle shop owners. And they dreamed that we will fly one day. But they did adopt something that you must understand. They did adopt. Sometimes our inventors do go through this problem. They think when the moment you hit an idea, okay, this is my idea, I must get a patent, I must be supported. No, please think again. You need to recheck. You need to recheck because it's good to get ideas, but don't think you're the only one getting that idea. There are a lot of other people who are getting this idea. We are not, we are an island. There are a lot of other people out there who also carry on. So we must actively think, right, I must sharpen up. I mean, I must check. I must do my checks and balances, not get upset over somebody thinking. You must be happy. Then you must go to the next stage of thinking. But they were fighting an establishment and supported by the highest level of science that heavier than air flying mach machines cannot fly. But today we do fly. Not only we do fly, we break the speeds, barriers and so on. And they are Kitty Hawk. And they did all these things. They studied a bit. They developed the wind, wind tunnels inside their own bicycle shop. Did all these small scale wind tips. And then studied the lift and all that. They had to, le they had to do a lot. They were determined to fly, that's it. That tenacity, the persistence, and the intention. And you can see, and they came up with coefficients that were established at the time, they proved them wrong. And they didn't have the degrees to back. They were not getting annual sessions, top presentations. They were just reading, but doing practically. And in 1903, the Kitty Hawk did fly. Few yards. But that few yards did change the humankind. But unfortunately, we also have bad things. 1915, we were bombing each other with the same machines. Unfortunately, not for the first, we were trying to make use of the machines to bomb each other. So when you get something, unfortunately, some of the other minds have more devious attributes. But that is, that is where we should get the value systems right too. But anyway, they proved somebody up there wrong the Lord Kelvins, and a scientific establishment. Then again, you will have some small ideas maybe, but it's not small ideas when King Gillette come up with a racer in 1901, safety racer, and he said, I'll retire only day when I cannot invent. I mean, still the Gillette is inventing. You have the single bay, the double bay, the triple bay, the aloe vera, all that. I mean, you can think of. The flying machines is different. Now, this is a racer. And you are still inventing, innovating within the razor. And he did it for nine, I mean, like, serious number of years before this company was taken over by a Procter & Gamble. But he, he proved again, you can, have be, you can be a serial inventor, serial innovator. And he talked about how many shavings per day across the globe, and your razor is there. And not only invented the product, he came up with a business model the razor and blade business model. You sell the razor sheep, so you, people will buy the blades. So the first coming of this razor and blade model, you sell the item, and then the other things that you need to put in come up as a business model. So there was an innovation in a business model. So you, there are so many things we should be thinking about in this. So, uh, and you push shaving to the entire global community. It's not a male-dominated function anymore. Right? So it's interesting. So when can we get Sri Lanka to think? When we can have some of these things that we just don't think about the dollars from just tourism, but we look at the creative element of our people and giving value, it's important. So almost all the countries that have on the first world this followed this thing. You look at some research, you look at some development, you protect your innovation, and it was mentioned by Dilan. It's getting that value to that, uh, the idea. And then the wealth creation is much more creative wealth creation. And we are, how you position the country, then it's very different. Because sometimes the way we run, if you take the $7 billion income from the Middle Eastern labor, the remittances, Perhaps our economy is 
will not be as good as it is today, or rather the position. I'm not talking about good, but the strength we have do come from that seven billion coming in. And it's not a creative, it's just sweating. And this brings other problems. So we need to embark on this journey. And that is why it's very vital. And we talk about middle income trap, trying to push 3,000 per capita. And countries like Switzerland, with a landmass much less, or rather in that category, right? They are going into this 80,000 plus by being creative, being innovative. And you run the world's largest food industry, the Nestle. You run the largest cement factories from Holzim, the Holder Bank, right? Coming from Switzerland. You run the best of biotechnology from Switzerland, right? They have come from that because you, have, you understand the need for inventions, the ideas, and adding, continuously adding value to what you have. And then that's how we now transform into the factor-based economy to the innovation-based economy. We talk about knowledge-based economy. And the knowledge has more value. The ideas have more value. But if they have value, only we protect it. So that's very important. So it's like this. So we need to ask our question about why people are frightened of new ideas. Right? Sometimes our administration system is really frightened of new ideas. But he said, I am, when I see the performance of the old ones, I am really frightened of those old ideas. Naturally so you should be. Right? Because they are not delivering the value that we need. So we need to embrace new ideas. And creativity is very, very important. So Sri Lanka has been sliding down the Global Innovation Index. And those who are in the decision-making process can dead, dive deep into this analysis and see where we are going wrong. So we have been, last year we were somewhat better. We came down from 105, fifth position to 85th, but this year again we have gone down to the 91st. But anyway, people say if you're not in the top 25, you don't count. Don't try to take very deeply into that. If you're not up there in the 21st, this is not an innovative economy. So we need to think. But last year it was very interesting. We were, we were the second best in coming up from 105 to 84. We were jumping to that level and we became the second best country in kind of jumping up in the last year. But unfortunately this year, we had just gone down again. So we need to sustain sometimes these things. So we need to look. So countries are made out of organizations, the organizations, the economic factors, that, but of course it all depends on individuals and the people. Individuals to be creative, for them to support, they become part of the organizations, the organizations to be seen as innovative, like the Gillettes and so on, right? So that, that then in turn transforms the economy that we need. So Peter Drucker from the management gurus, every organization talk about the essential ingredient innovation. And he said it time back, not recent. And of course you need people like Bill Gates to say that forget about the factors of production of the labor capital and so on. Essential innovation. One factor out for all, innovation. Because innovation embodies so many things. Because you have to have so many things right to get that point. So don't work on the factors. The knowledge-based economy is not a factor-based thing. That's, a, that's the economy, the old economy. Right? We need to think differently in decision-making too. Because sometimes we take, talk about knowledge-based economy, but we take our decisions based on the old rules. And that won't serve. That won't serve us. So Robert Solow got his Nobel Prize for telling this for the United States in 1987, that when he won his Nobel Prize, he was simply analyzing the old data. And he said, America in the 60s and developed because of this innovation aspects the technology innovations that was happening. He took 20 years to analyze and say that, and then he got his Nobel Prize in economics for that. So it's, if you want proof, this is true, this is proof, this is real validated proof. So we need to shift into this gear. We need to believe in this. So if somebody's want in the decision making, you look at it and you see where we fail and we are of individual positions in about 100 and among 140 countries. What is bad this year's 91st position is, this year the 91st position came with about 110 economies evaluated. 
The last year, our 81st position was about 140 economies evaluate. So it's, uh, it's a little bit, little bit more worrying. And we are trying to work with GII, with WIPO in Geneva to see that. So innovations can come from anything. And you have various types of innovations as well, from disruptive, which can be fantastic if you have few disruptives coming in, that really propels you to a very different position. That's what Steve Jobs type of thing, right? And then the radical innovations, they're equally radical, but may not be as disruptive as what we like to, but they do, do change. Then you have incremental. You need to have incremental. A lot of incremental things need to happen, but that's day by day you need to think differently. So social innovations, then to frugal innovations, a word famous by Jugad in India, is coming from like this, the washing machine that you serve from the side. One Chinese company was, one day was figuring or trying to figure out why there are so much of washing machine sales in India for that one company. They sent a person to find out they're not, they not washing clothes in that. They were making yogurt. So it became a yogurt machine. So uh, there are so many things that we can transfer today. And if we think creatively, and we can mix, match, and then adopt and use it. So this is frugal innovation. There's so much in that. And there's reverse innovations. The low-cost ECG machines of mobile, which in China came up with, is now going back to USA. Right? There are so many things that developing economies, because of the way our society is structured, we need to innovate to improve. And some of these innovations have equal value in a first world economy. And this is now happening. And that is the word reverse innovation. The sports drink Gatorade, it's now with Pepsi has this, a major share in that company, came from a journal publication in Bangladesh. And it's our kandab, technically, if you take the kanji, right? And it, it, it turned around a medical opinion in the West. But the University of South Florida, which learned from this, really, really generated themselves. They, they, they disrupt themselves in moving forward, like when the Gatorade came. But unfortunately, we are not making use of some of that information. So there are things that are happening, and like the equations, Right, you have environmental side innovations and we've come to that. So we look at very desperately to generate one million jobs in our country. The politicians talk about this one million. But we have this blue economy. When Gunther Prime came with uh, the blue economy concept, he was a researcher. He was going for zero emissions. He identified, unfortunately in this book, Sri Lanka is not figuring. But we believe that Sri Lanka can figure seriously in this book or rather this concept, if you really work, because we are a biodiversity hotspot. And then he identified about 100 innovations, and he said with these 100 innovations, within 10 years, you can bring 100 million jobs. When he first published, the Club of Rome first published this book on blue economy, he talked about, it was totally inspired by nature. It's totally inspired by nature, nothing else. Right, and how? It's like the desert beetle from the, the African desert. How this beetle in a very dry environment is getting his shower or his water to drink from air. How his surface design captures water from the, the humidity, the slight humidity that the dry desert air carries. And that's how he gets his water and his shower. And a combination of hydrophobic and hydrophilic surface. And today you try to learn that and even try to do so many things. To put it into cooling towers, try to collect the, the mist that is going up, the evaporating water back again. Right? Based on this natural nature structure. And how people learn from the termite mounds and build the first non-air non condition, a top class mall in the, the Harare, Zimbabwe. Right, and that learning came from the termite mounds because termites had the ability, two architects from Sweden identified, first one identified the natural phenomena, second one put mathematical modeling to that and thereupon enabled the buildings to come up. No need for AC. Because termites know how to moderate, 
uh, even though the outside temperature is fluctuating, they knew how to control their internal temperature. Now that learning was taken and built buildings without air conditioning. And this one was a very low cost, but very high in a sense. Um, recurrent cost was different, totally. Today we have a problem in Colombo with air conditioning. The CEB has a problem, right? We run the peak load. So this is biomimicry. And you have so many examples if you look at it. These hundred innovations is worth going through that. So uh, he again revisited his blue economy after two years, and then he saw 200 projects implemented, and then US 1 billion invested, and about 8 million jobs created. And this is practical. The first one was theoretical. After studying, he kind of said, you can. And he revisited these projects, and there's a lot of learnings, a lot of learnings in these two books, if you look at. And I think we should have our own blue economy book for Sri Lanka. And we should do nature-inspired jobs. It is putting one million youth behind three wheelers. is killing the labor structure. It's killing creativity. And depriving youth out of their youth and the nation out of their abilities. I mean, potential ability. So we need to make the jobs inspiring too. And it is like the Kiran Mushamdas show, the the most richest woman in India at one point and still in the Forbes 500. She started as a brewer, but she was not allowed to practice as a brewer because she's female. Right, you cannot go and do that brewing. So she thought, okay, I'll put my science into papaya and then started getting enzymes. And the farm and so on. Now you can see here Biocon Empire. Based on natural stuff, based on fermentation. And now on oral insulin, she innovated on oral insulin and so on. And her message, I'm pretty sure, the, the building the business with ethics and bringing that into the authenticity, into a business. MJ Fernandez, so the, the, the ethics value. So he said, she said, I want to be remembered as someone who put India on the scientific map of the world in terms of large innovation. I want to be remembered for making a difference to global healthcare, first making the difference in India itself. And I want to be remembered as someone who did make a difference to social economic development in India. Now using this, the knowledge that she had, but she was not able to practice that particular one, better for India and better for her, into the brewing liquor. She did went into enzymes, the enzymes and then the so on, and the, now today the medical. So this is, this, is, this is the type of vision that you need in the dreamers, and that is what dreamers are made of and should be made of. But this, the business then came in. So she probably was a dream as well as a doer and enabled herself to pull on. So you can have this combination, and that combination can be potent and very good for an economy. So we can come into tea. I just thought I'll touch on tea. Right? Now we talked about perhaps a global market of 9 billion, maybe the right value is 12 billion maybe today, the entire global market, but we may be talking about 1.25 billion in, in that order of magnitude in the country today. But we, have a, we probably have that to capture is where we, are, where, we are, we still want to look at the number of cups being taken, right, or the consumed. But can we go beyond now, T as the center to the biotech, and then you open up, in the, you're talking about 100 billion area, and it's growing. And nano, bio, you're talking about even more of a bigger market. So bringing in more knowledge and developing T as the platform to go up. So it's like this. I look at this humble fan. I don't know whether anybody has read the, uh, the brochure, or rather the, the instruction manual that comes. It's a very small booklet. I just happened to glance at it. And what's in there? in this particular thing is T catechin applied in the, the fan. Why? It's the antioxidant, the extracts. We talked about the building, the sick building syndrome. And here you plug in that antioxidant and you try to clean your air. So there are circulation and then you have your layer dropping and then try to get the activation and then clean. 
Now you have an entirely different opportunity space. Right? So German, Japanese have been doing this. So the extracts. So you need to work on. And there are so many, probably such, some more hidden knowledge because uh, in that, there, there's always knowledge to be identified. There's always something mysterious in these things. And you need to, you need to dream on in that too. So this is an example where you just broad-based it. And then I'll come back again. A little later to T again. We have our children writing essays. And we publish it in children's corners, the small Sunday papers and so on. And they say, we have these things. But what have we done with these things? Not much. But Sri Lanka is a treasure island for nanotechnology era. We are a treasure island. We have almost all the high-grade purity materials. Unfortunately, we sell them cheap today. So we sell them like one kilogram for 200 rupees. Our graphite, which is the world's only way in graphite. We only have the biggest deposit. Nobody else. And it's 100% pure. It's almost 99.999. And so many things are happening with graphite. And if you bring a one gram of some of the products that are today, one gram costs 150000 for the lab. One gram. We are selling a one kilogram for 200 rupees. But of course, there's intellectual property, the knowledge that you have to do to generate this change. But like MJF was showing, can't we get this value chain totally controlled? At the moment, we are not at all in control of that. We are not. We try to sometimes sell a few kilograms and try to settle the monthly corporation salary bill. Unfortunately, with the top grade mineral. We seem to be doing that too. So one of those in that particular list, what child would have written, and it was there. Coming back to tea, we have this type of inventions. This is a nano and tea connected, where it was shown like in the Intel competition, uh, how to look at anti-cancer uh, drug delivery system based on nanomaterial and the tea extracts. And so the nanomaterial acting as a vehicle because we know at the cancer sites, the openings are much more for bloods to go in. So you look at the proper diameter and then you can load it and you can then target it. Targeted drug delivery. Instead of the chemotherapy, which is totally a destructive technique. I mean, it destroys quite a lot in the area. So uh, these are opportunities that we need to work on. Right? And hopefully that's what... So it, it, it takes T, leap in the center, but it opens up much, much more avenues with separating the extracts, the opportunity identification, and so on. And it's a very, very high value added. And can we be in control? Can we deliver with that? So we have talked about action. First and foremost, like tuition kills creativity. And at universities, we get after the creativity has almost been killed, and it's a little difficult to resurrect at that point, unfortunately, but we try. Developing an ecosystem, which is exactly what is happening. You hold hands with people who have the ideas and try to support. And you become, you, you, you are passionate about that support. It's very important. Having looked at, have, have become paradigm shifting decisions in your life, you try to look at, okay, how to support others. Then it's very, very important that we should be excited by developments. There are a lot of things that are happening, but we are not almost aware of it because science is not receiving the attention from the media at all in Sri Lanka. Then factoring STI into the decision-making process, this budget too had good like the last budget. I don't know about the rest of the paragraphs, the science was supported, right, uh, in the budget. And of course, need to put it in, into practice. And then benchmarking Sri Lankan should not be complacent with having one or two good ideas or having one or two good companies or being happy with, okay, I can live to my next meal. We should not be complacent. We should be looking at disrupting ourselves to the next level. We have the opportunity. We have the potential. We have the resources. We have the abilities. It's just that we just don't cut the gems in the right way. We're not giving that, and it's one of those problems that we have.
So that's where the enablers has to work on. So some of these things we have been looking, talking to the people who are in the decision making process. An execution with a purpose. We should not just procrastinate on this thing, okay, let's just put tomorrow. This is the way things happen here. Next year it will be okay. That type of mindset should also be turned around. We should be, in, we should be a little bit more persistent, trying to execute what is needed and get the desired goals ex, um, available, I mean enable. So like Harsha's Vega, where he's trying to break the world's record and trying to take on the Elon Musk of USA with this car. So going, breaking the top speed, and then what he says is, if you can do this, then the rest you can do anyway because you are showing, you are beating the best in their own game. And we know how many youth has been inspired by that. One of the monitor teams won the Formula One the, when they entered US, uh, the UK competition, and three prizes, including the best driver, right? So, and some of them were inspired by this, been working with this supercar, and in the trace city, in a small, small area that is happening. So you can, and it needs to happen. So what more can the private sector do? What more an organization can do? And I saw this at two universities working together, University of Pittsburgh and Carnegie Mellon. And Carnegie Mellon was a donation. It's a philanthropy from the Andrew Carnegie of the steel fame. And he was very keen to get people to read. He is considered the patron saint of libraries because he has donated about 2,000 libraries. And this is before the information age, but the point is he wanted, because he himself benefited because somebody opened up the small library he had. He was a working boy. On a Saturday afternoon, this particular hundred of these books were open. So he went on a Saturday afternoon and read the books. And he transformed himself to be the richest person. And his legacy was... He then pushed back, Carnegie Mellon is a good example, and then he gave libraries, donated libraries. So, but what I saw is different in that sense, how to get these ideas into things. So, this probably is possible. You have the ideas, and you have this then, this type of thing. This is, this is nas kind of nestled between Pittsburgh University and Carnegie Mellon in a small 3,000 square feet area, Idea Foundry, and the CEO there. And they were, they were entertaining ideas, giving them the business models, finding the startup capital, and launching the business. And their, their sense of purpose is to transform Pittsburgh because they went down when the steel industry collapsed in USA. But they didn't want to get the Pittsburgh down, they want to get the Pittsburgh up. And they were pushing for entrepreneurship to come through with new ideas and creativity. So this is how it happened. So 3,000 square feet, footfalls with idea, people with ideas, and then support them to get into the next level. And I suppose this is another, this something. This is something Sri Lanka lacks at this stage. This definitely Sri Lanka lacks this one. And this has to come from that, that mentor in residence, the entrepreneur in residence, the kind of the mentorship that is needed. And that is the enablers and the doers to be supported. So let me conclude. Two Nobel laureate, Nobel uh, the prize winning chemist, Linus Pauling said, what's the best way to get great ideas? To have a lot of ideas. So it's a very simple thing. Just think about how many good ideas, how many ideas you're having today as people problems. Or you're only complaining. There was a recent market research study that was mentioned, Sri Lankans come up with four excuses per day on average. So we need to get out of that, that problem of coming up with excuses why we can't do. We have to think we can do. If we cannot, cannot do it today, we have to be determined to do it tomorrow. You need that determination and persistence. So it's very important, linear spoiling, simple advice. Don't be happy with an award today. Keep on thinking. Keep on being even more creative. So Sri Lanka needs ideas. Sri Lanka needs the dreamers. It's very, very important. Because we reach out to the outside to think, come help me. And I'm pretty sure from Mincing Lane that you would not have that observation of what is unfairly, what is happening unfairly to the Sri Lankan situation 
when you observe that you are grow somebody is growing, somebody is sweating, but the value addition is not happening at the Sri Lankan line, Ceylon stage. It's happening elsewhere. And that ability to think with that observation of trying for that pursuit of doing that shift and then finally succeeding. So we need the inventors not to stop at the invention and perhaps an award. You need to do that rest of the bit for that change in the economy. So Sri Lanka needs. And there was this small story about an email that was going around. There was brains for sale in the country, in one country. And people were bidding for those things. And there were brain from USA, brain from Norway, etc. And there was a brain from Sri Lanka. And the brain from Sri Lanka fetched the highest price. And then somebody asked a question, why the Sri Lankan brain is, because they have not done anything. But these are dead brains, or the brains from the dead, and said, yes, that's why it is useful, because they have not used that brain. So unfortunately, we cannot carry on with that tag anymore. We need to make use of the gray matter that we have. And we, we, we have gray matter good ones, but we're just not using it. So finally, as all inventors, as yourself, you have, when you go beyond the limit, you have made history. And you have, by changing. But maybe the, the two sons will have to do that going beyond T, making that, that, that very, very important change in that innovation ecospace in this country. What we lack for the support of the dreamers need to be realized. The dreamers need an anchoring point. And if the government is not going to do that, somebody else has to do that. Because we cannot always expect the government to do that. But we expect government to do that as state who is responsible for the nation. But if they're not doing, or if they're failing to do or delay, somebody else has to do that. Because that's needed to be done. So we hope that then Dilhan and Malik. So it's, when you go beyond that, you will go another going beyond the limit. But you as inventors, congratulations for the awards and for winning. But everybody who participated, because there were interesting array of applications, we read a lot, and it was interesting to see the minds of the deep people. But go beyond, think about what you thought, and don't think that you have thought the final thinking is that, what you put on paper. And don't get discouraged by those who missed out. It should be another lesson. So for the rest, we wish you to make the history again. I mean, make the history. But it's very, very important to go beyond the limit. Don't set limits for yourself. And the country needs this too. Thank you.